and welcome to another BGSU ACHA matchup. Tonight we have Louisville and Bowling Green. Bowling Green and Cream, Louisville and Black. But first we have our senior night. Festivities, seniors, Chase Denall, Jack Messenger, and Justin Chicatano. I'm Ben Shannon. I will have my broadcast partner, Justin Chicatano, in a few minutes. But right now, let's see him get honored. And we will. Starting the senior night festivities. We'd like to thank everybody for tuning in for this. Chase and all is the first senior honored as he comes skating out. Chase and all. Covered by his parents and girlfriend Rachel. Played four years at BGSU, including this season with the Dirty Birds. In his first season with the club, he has 48 points, 27 goals, 21 assists in 23 games. We'd like to thank Chase for all of his hard work and all he does that he put in for this team. Blessed with his future endeavors, Chase Denall. An absolute just monster on, on and off the ice, Chase Denall. I know the team will miss him a lot with all the hard work he puts in and the veteran leadership. Next we have up, as we will take some pictures of Chase and all. A lot of stick pass for Chase and all. Second senior we have Jack Messenger, accompanied by his dad Eric. Jack has played four and a half seasons for the Dirty Birds with an astonishing 79 games played for the Clubbers. We would, like, we would like to thank Jack for all his hard work and he's put in for his very long career with the team. And we'd like to send our best and future memories to Jack Messenger. And not to be biased, but my favorite senior coming out is Justin Chicatano, my broadcast partner, play-by-play, -play, the voice of the Dirty Birds for two seasons. He's called. He's called 56 games for the Clubbers in two seasons. He's, and he's also been chosen alongside me at the CSHL playoffs this season. Great honor. Thank you again to the league. I'd like to thank Justin for all his hard work and for being the greatest broadcast partner I can ask for. Thank all the seniors and congratulate them on a great career. Justin will be in the booth. You will have a matchup coming up. Worms is just around the corner. For, and we will have a pregame show, warm-ups, and then puck drops. Stay tuned for a great ACHA matchup coming up next.
And welcome back to this BGSU ACHA matchup. Like I said, as we introduce, it is senior night. I'm Ben Shannon. To my partner, the beautiful senior, the voice of your Bowling Green Falcons, Justin Chicatano. And we got a great one slated for you as we're waiting for Louisville to get out just to start warm-ups. She just missed it. Chased and all. Jack Messenger, and like I said, my broadcast partner, the voice of the Falcons, Justin Chicatano, was honored earlier in a great ceremony made by the bowl, made brought to you by Bowling Green Club Hockey. We thank you for tuning in. Last night we saw a six to four win for the Bowling Green Falcons, a crazy one as they go up four nothing in the first period, kind of blow that lead, make it a four to three game mm -hmm. uh, in the second, and then Louisville ended up coming all the way back, making it four to four in the third. They score, uh, Bowling Green scores one in the third, and or scores one, one middle of the third, and the empty netter did the trick. Justin, what, would, what do you want to see from this ginormous ACHA TSCHL matchup tonight? Well, well, I mean, we know that Louisville, they're a really good team, and they got off to a very, very slow start in the first period. BG played their best period in the first period. I think what they have to expect, what BG has to expect is that the way Louisville played the second and third period, that's how they're going to play all three periods tonight. That's what the, that's what they have to expect. So BG, they need a full three periods. And uh, as some of them said, they played 40 minutes last night. They played the first and came out strong in the third. They didn't play their, their, their best hockey in, in the second. I know we talked about that, and so did they during the second intermission and also the post game uh, yesterday. So play all three periods big because we know that Louisville, they're going to come out strong for all three periods here. And also be physical. I have a feeling that Louisville, they're going to be throwing the body around a bit more than last night. It, it kind of took them a period to start throwing the body around in the second and third. They were throwing it around a lot more than back in the first. So I expect a complete game from all three teams here tonight. And last night was one of my favorite games I recall. It might have been my favorite. Hoping for another classic one here tonight, Ben. I'm excited. Yeah, it should be a very special one as we uh, are...
And good evening, everybody. We are live at Slater Family Ice Arena for this ACHA Division II matchup between the Louisville Cardinals and the Bowling Green State Falcons. And this is the final game, final home game for the Falcons here at the Slate. My name is Justin Chicatano, alongside my broadcast partner, Ben Shanahan. And this is the final game of a two game set between the Falcons and the Cardinals. Last night we saw the Falcons survive a really, really intense game all throughout. They went up 4-0 at the end of one. It was 4-3 with Louisville coming back at the end of two. Louisville tied it about midway through the third period, 4-4. And then about a minute after that, BG regained the lead 5-4. And then the captain, Adam Burtzlap, ended the game with an empty net goal with 36 seconds left. So a very in intense game last night. Same two teams going up against each other tonight here at the same Arena, I'm hoping for another great game, Ben. Uh, I asked you last night, uh, what are your keys to the game here, Ben? The Shanna Plan. Yeah, I mean, it's it's pretty simple last night. Get on the board first, use that momentum, and, uh, you know, play as a team, have some fun out there, you're playing a game. And I'm not gonna say the third point, because it worked last night, so if you wanna say the third point, Justin, I'll give you the senior night honors. Um, I'm not gonna say it, though. Yeah, I mean, last night it worked. I, I, I was thinking about it all game long, and, and I mean, I think, like, I said it last night, so I guess I, I have the green light to say it uh, tonight, so I'll go over it, I guess. Um, play all three periods full. You, you can't take a break in the second. You can play all 60 minutes. Uh, be physical as well, and stay out of the box. They did a great job of, of doing it last night. And let's see if they can do another uh, great job tonight. I would emphasize that for, for, for uh, Louisville, too. Louisville, they, they took a, a lot of penalties, some obvious, some borderline. But they have to stay out in the box as well. But I have a feeling that after last night's game, it's going to be a very physical game. Hopefully, well, probably even more physical than last night. Yeah, I also got a feeling that we're going to see Jack Smalley. No, none's been confirmed yet, but I'm, I got a good feeling, Justin. We'll probably see Jack Smalley versus the Giacomo, two freshmen. In net, I mean, DiGiacomo, when he came in after that four-piece that um, Louisville starter gave up. And, I mean, he, he had an outstanding He was unbelievable. Showing. He had an outstanding showing, a ton of great saves, always in position. He was outstanding. Jack Smalley, once again, always outstanding. He gets the win last night after a crazy one. And we saw a lot of his frustrations. Luckily, I didn't get the best of him, and he got the win. And we are just about time for puck drop. 20 minutes around the clock, teams are meeting, picking up pucks, to end warm-ups. And then we will have a great matchup for you. Packed barn here for the ACHA senior night for the Falcons. Once again, three seniors honored. Jack Messinger, Chase Tenall, and Justin Chicatano. A lot of parents here for the last home game of the season as Bowling Green will head on the road the rest of the year, two games at Lake State. Mm -hmm. And then at Ohio State for the TSCHL playoffs, stay tuned for information about that on our Twitter because we will have that entire tournament right here on Bowling Green Club YouTube channel. It looks like the starters for tonight's game are going to be Trey Zebel, Chase Nitschke, Mark Rudo. Trent Gray and Chase Tunnel. I, I said Trey first because uh, like he keeps on getting moved back forward defense. So you never know. He's yeah. one of those great <laughs> two-way players. Starting defense, uh, um, Trent Gray and Trey Zebel, and starting forwards at left wing Mark Rudo at center Chase Tunnel, and at right wing Chase Nitschke. Both in the matchup as we mentioned before. Both freshmen. Smalley versus the Giacomo. Zebel over to Gray. BJ controls off the opening draw and then all. Uh, Dumps it in, excuse me. Burkhardt chips it up near Morgan. And now Zebel takes it away. Zebel off the boards. They're all trying to chip it up, but it was poked away from him. And now it's popped back in the zone. Gray plays it off the boards. Pass Nitschke. Anessis plays it across. It was poked at by Rudo. Now Burkhardt takes it. Nitschke will take it. Looking to pass up Chase and all. He will get there with a lot of traffic, but that will chase Noel's pass will get right past Mark Rudo. Louisville now ending up the ice. He'll dump it down, right down to Jack Smalley. Smalley will glove it, and we will have a face off to the right 
of freshman goaltender, or to the left rather, of freshman goaltender Jack Smalley. On the ice now for Bowling Green, Horvath had a goal last night. Nick Tiggs, Cole Ferry, Logan Harchi, and Mikey Papawana, who also had a goal last night. Louisville will go in the corner as he battled it up around. And he'll pass that in front. Being watched by Tiggs. Checked around. And picked up once again, and he's going to go around the net. Being battled by Cam Horvath. Horvath take the puck, and he'll lose it. Fair will regain it and leave it out of the zone. We will reset behind and try to regain the zone. We apologize. We're having a problem with the score clock, trying to get that figured out for you guys. Harsh will take the puck, and it'll be dumped in, picked up by another Louisville Cardinal. That'll be saved and stopped by Jack Smalley. We'll have another faceoff as Bowling Green will look to make a line change. Nelson, Coor, and Schuler. Schuler had a goal last night, breaking his long drought of no goals. And that'll be dropped one by Louisville. Quick shot, and that'll be deflected by Jack Smalley. Coor will pass it up the ice, but it'll be the intercepted by a Cardinal. And Coor will pass once again intercepted. Doesn't have the numbers, though, but he'll skate into the zone. He'll go behind the net, looking to shake off Nick Tiggs. That'll be tipped into Colin Nelson. Now Schuler will now take it up as Coor streaking. Schuler. And he's going to be called for offsides. 18.08 left in the first period. It is currently 0-0. Zero zero. Different than yesterday's game. Yesterday's game started with a five minute of non-stop hockey. No breaks, a lot of line changes. Kind of set the pace there. So Cam Horvath put it one into the net. And puck will be battled for at center ice. But we'll pick up by the Cardinal. Car Chased by Coor. That was picked up by, I believe, Mark Rudo. That, no, that's Marky Papawani, rather. He'll dump that in, and Cardinals regain that in their zone and reset. Cardinals dump that in. Burks left, Sarno, Shooty, now on the ice is what I've seen. And it's Klein also on the ice. And Jacob Dubendorfer, the Golden Bull, will take the ice. Battling at the blue line. Picked up by Sarnowski. Sarnowski to Klein. Klein will pass be intercepted back to Klein. Klein will dump that in. Both teams kind of back and forth right now. No one giving an inch. And that'll be picked up by Jacob Dubendorfer. Dropped in. Shooter will be chased down by a Cardinal. Cardinals will pick up the puck. Louisville skating around in their zone, looking to make a change. Gotta and make sure it'll be dumped in. Siebel will regain the zone, no. All right, we're good. And Trent Gray will go back pat right next to Jack Smalley and reset. And we got the scoreboard fixed for you guys. I'm sorry, I had to get that sorted out. There was something wrong with it, but it should be working now. Gray back ends one in front, save, rebound. It's an all weights. Spins, now trying to get to it, and he maintains control. Still working with it. Now back to Rudo. Rudo shot, save, and Giacomo didn't know where it was as Mitchki was uh, going across the crease for a deflection. And Giacomo made the save through traffic, and that stops play with 16, 18 left to go in the first. Not exactly the, uh, the technical start I was looking for for tonight's team. <laughs> But oh, that had to be something. Yeah, it's all good. So that puck is backhanded up to Denol trying to chase. Beeman gets to it first. Rudo chops at it, he heads towards Denol. Beeman stops it, though. Now Burkhardt has it. Burkhardt being checked there by Rudo. He spins around and tosses it out. And something I just noticed, there is a pretty decent crowd here as that puck is thrown off the boards by the BG bench. There is a pretty decent crowd here for such a late game. Yeah. No, it is a good good packed barn coming. Slowly trickling in for a great senior class. 15.50 left in the first. It is currently 0-0. Zero to zero. You're just tuning in. Face off one back by Louisville. Oh, what a move there by Ferry. He moves and he shoots, and that one went just wide. Oh, what a play there by Ferry as he almost picked the corner. 
as he made a great move around the Louisville defenseman. Now Tiggs over to Archie. Archie is past Papuanu. Now Halinski will pick it up. Halinski being checked there by Papuanu. He throws it back to his teammate there. It is worked up there by Williams as he throws it in. Smalley will stay in the crease as it was played by Harchi. And then Papuanu fell down. Horvath trying to get to it. And he was poke checked there by Halinski. Now Halinski back ends one in deep. Smalley will play it. He'll throw it around. We go past Tiggs. Barry will pick it up. Barry pass across. Off the stick of Horvath. He chops at it. Saves in the zone. Knocked down by Costa. Loose at the circle. Costa has it now. Backhand pass into the middle. Ferry was almost able to uh, knock it away. Excuse me. Now a touch pass. Costa moves in. He shoots. Save made by Smalley. And it rolls in on him. And I believe that was poked away by one of the, uh, the uh, defensemen. It was either Tiggs or Harchi who knocked it away. I don't know if Smalley got a piece of it, but he did not see it as it was rolling back in on him. You now Louisville control is back in their own end. Throw it all the way up. A nice thing is called the Sarnowski gets there first. Faceoff will come back into the BG end. And Core wants the right faceoff circle. So that's where they will take it. And the officials are talking. Not sure what they're talking about. Well, I guess they're changing where they're doing the faceoff at. And I guess they're gonna say that they're gonna say it wasn't icing. I wasn't sure if it got tipped or not, but I guess it was. So the faceoff is at the red line. Klein plays it in, goes off the glass and all the way around towards Schuler. Schuler chops at it. Giro played it, but it was taken away by Nelson. Nelson washed there by Carl in the corner, off the boards. Now play it out. Played there by Giro as he tried to get it over to Costa. Now Costa has it, throws it up, it goes off the stick there of Dindic. The play back up. Nelson moves in. Nelson dropped past Core. Core shoots and it went this wide. First half puts it in front. Now back over to Klein. Klein's shot got deflected into the corner where Core controls. Now Klein again. Klein down low to Core. Core shoots and that one went wide. Sarnowski trying to pinch in and is able to keep it in. Battling there with sh Shredders. Core shot save. The rebound backhanded. It's loose. Nelson battling for it. Now it comes out where Carl will control. Carl moves in. Stops up there. Throws it in deep. It goes across the crease. The Shredders battling in there with Sarnowski. Throws it in deep. Klein plays it back behind the net. Klein off the glass. Knocked down there. And now thrown in front. It was blocked off. And a shot there. Six A made by Smalley. Klein pokes at it. Now it comes in front. And now it's cleared all the way back out. Milia has it. Milia pass was hit by Dubendorfer, but it comes in the zone. The shot there by Zima went wide. Now Sickley trying to pinch. Now Bursaf takes it away. Bursaf chip pass just out of the reach of Dubendorfer. Now Gray backhands one across, and now Zebel. Zebel long pass up to Dubendorfer. He goes off his stick. Now Williams will go back to get it. What do you think of the pace so far in the game, Ben? I think both teams are playing with a lot of great pace. It's kind of a mix of Bowling Green's first period and Louisville's second period from last night. That's why we're seeing kind of a stalemate with both teams not really getting many chances, both, but a few each way. Both teams are moving the puck very well, but they're both playing very soundly on defense. It's very, very hard for either team to make their way into the zone. Yeah, no one's really giving an inch. Most of this game has just been kind of chilling at the center ice. Now Denol moves in. Denol goes around. Puts one in front, and that one went just wide. Now Gray throws it in, save, rebound, and a big save by DiGiacomo. What a save. Bruno had the chance on the rebound, and DiGiacomo came up huge with a save. Now in front, pass across, and there was no one there as it all swept it across the crease. Go ahead, Ben. Sorry. Yeah, DiGiacomo has been just absolutely phenomenal this series. Since he's been in that second period, Louisville is just a whole different team. I mean, he was dead to rights there. He was down and out, and he made an unbelievable save as Bruno got the rebound. Now Gray plays it. Gray, saucer pass across. Rudo has it now. Rudo off the board, just out of the reach of Dunal. That goes down for icing. 11.27 left to go here in the first. No score yet between Louisville and Bowling Green. So 
it all against Morgan on the draw. At the far circle to the left of Smalley. And they wait. Still waiting. <laughs> now they drop it. Both guys kind of went in twice like the puck was about to be dropped. Now Denal, great control there as he works his way in. Throws it all the way around. Rudo gets to it. Couldn't quite chop at it. Now Papuanu maintains possession in the zone. Rudo, great move there. Still has it. He shoots and that shot got blocked off by Williams. Now Williams will play it off the glass and all the way back down. And that will go down for an icing. 11.01 left in this first period. Justin, what do you think both teams got to do to break this tie? Well, I mean, until both teams give a little bit on defense, it's, it's going to be tough for either team to score. But they're not giving an inch, like you said, on defense. And they're going to have to work hard uh, for their goals. And we saw a goal fest last night. Ten goals given up in the game last night. Six for VG, four for uh, Louisville. So I think it's going to be a much more tight game all throughout. And, and we will see how each team tries to adjust their um, offensive game and their forecheck yep. to uh, get offensive pressure. I'm also curious once that tie ends up being, if it doesn't, if it's not an overtime, once that tie is broken, how the team that gives up will react because it's kind of been one of those physical games that nobody can really do anything. Oh, Harchi throws it back in. Let's play it by DiGiacomo and he guided it over to Beeman. Played out by Burkhart, off the stick of Morgan. Tig shops at it. It goes past Horvath and Papuanu, and it's thrown back in by Beeman. Harchi racing in to go get it. Burkhart pressuring him, and now Ferry has it. Ferry off the board. Papuanu trying to get to it. It goes past him, and now Carl plays it over to Holinsky. Holinsky pass across. Now Dro. Dro throws it up. It goes all the way down. Stinzik will get to it first to negate the icing. Now Carl has it. Works his way on in. Poke check there by Horvath. Now Tiggs plays it around. Dro plays it in deep. Costa trying to control. Horvath takes it away. Horvath throws it all the way out. Will that be hard enough for icing? No icing. The puck was rolling, so I figured it might be icing, but it stopped up. And now Sarnowski throws it all the way around. Heads towards Schuler. In the middle, a shot save made by Smalley off the shot from Dalton Carl. And that stops play with 9.31 to go here in the first. And I think, I mean, I wasn't expecting a, a goal fest or a, like a very tight defensive battle. I was expecting both teams to, to just have a very close and tight game. And so far, that's what we've had here through the first half of the first period. Nelson trying to play it. Running too hard there by Costa. Pass across the court. He took it away one-on-one. -on -one. He moves in. Great move there, and he was sick check there. He couldn't get around the defense. Big hit there in the corner by Schuler. Nelson trying to keep it in, it in, and he does. Abreu plays it across. Big hit there in the corner by Schuler again. And Cora took a tumble. Now Sarnowski. Now, now Schuler. Hope check there by Dinzik, and he plays it back in. It's guided back behind the net by Smalley. Client controls, pass across. Sarowski handles it. Backhand chip pass to Shooty. Shooty running too hard there by two different Louisville Cardinals who's running to Sickles and Zima. Zima moves in, save made with the pad by Smalley. Now Sarnowski tried to play it out, was kept in by Sickles. Pass across, and Gray chops it out. Shooty plays it back over to Gray. Now bursts out controls, pass across. Smith brings it in, great move there to get around. Uh, Sickles pass in front, out of the reach of first half, and it goes past Smith. Now Milia will control, plays it across, and Zaritsky has it now. Pass up, and almost a break pass, but Zebel was able to, to break it up. Now Zebel took a tumble. Now Milia being washed out by first half, but he's chopped out there. Now thrown out, and just too far for Shredders. Gray goes around. Plays it over to Shooty. Shooty pass across, and I believe Shredders broke his stick as he uh, whacked it on the ice and he broke it. Now Zebo, great move there, being held up, poked in front, and a penalty call as BG will get the first power play, and they will work it with the extra man. Now Rudo. Rudo 
Trying to go around Morgan, and the puck is touched there by Amestis, and that will stop play. I want to move there by Zebel as he drew a penalty. Yeah, I mean, we've said we've said it time after time. His stick handling is just so, so talented, and, you know, sometimes he'll get through the defense, and if he doesn't, it's a good shot. You're going to the box. So with 7.24 left to go here in the first, BG gets the first power play of the game. And their power play was very effective last night. I believe they only got one goal, but they had a ton of chances on the power play last night. On, that, on the one five on three they had, they were defended very well by Louisville, but every other power play they had, they looked very, very good. As now Tiggs has it, Tiggs pass across, and now Gray. Other players out besides Tiggs and Gray are Horvath, Nelson, and Core. Gray has it now, Gray shoots, save made by the Giacomo, it's loose, and now cleared out of the crease. Beeman has it now, off the glass, kept in the zone, still kept in, not controlled, then thrown out. Costa will try and get to it. Tiggs watching him. Tiggs pokes it away, being held up there as Costa gets to it. Tiggs shoves him, No Horvath takes it away. Back pass, it goes off the official, and now Core has it. Core pass across, Tiggs now. Minute 10 to go in the power play. Now Tiggs will get it back as the break, as the break-in pass was stopped. And now Denal has it at the red line. Makes a great move there around Carl. Pass across over to Ferry. Ferry stops up at the blue line. Pass across, Papuanu controls. Still has it, fans on the pass, still controls. I don't think Papuanu saw Denal there. And now Zebul. Zebul moves in, pass across, Papuanu. Waits, shoots, blocked in front. It's loose in the crease. And Ferry couldn't keep it in as he was too far away from the puck. Just over 30 seconds to go on the power play. Puck thrown in. Nitschke trying to get to it. Nitschke and now Denal. Denal spins by the boards. Gonna get it down low and it was blocked off from th and thrown out of the zone. 10 seconds now to go on the power play as Zebul controls. Over to Ferry. Ferry pass across. Out of the reach of the null. And the power play is now over as Williams will leave the box. Now pass across. Tipped in by Shredders. Now Dubendorfer flips it out. Goes off the leg of Zaritsky. Now Zaritsky plays it in off the boards to himself. Great play there. Moves in, pass in front was blocked off by Dubendorfer. And now Zaritsky still maintaining control. Now Zima tries to work it in front, but he was blocked off there and then knocked down hard by Zebel. Now Papuanu trying to race out, tries to make a move there. And now, and now Denal, great move there, he shoots and he scores! What a goal by Chase Denal! Great toe drags through the legs of one of the defenders, and he was able to put a top shelf onto Giacomo. BG strikes first, it's one nothing. And just like that, Justin, my senior night tribute to all three of you is now out of date as Janal adds once another point and gives the Falcons the lead. 16 minutes, well, about 15 minutes into this one. 15-15. Yeah, I mean, that was just an absolutely beautiful goal and how many times have we seen that this season? I mean. It's great for him to net one on his senior night. He scores more goals in like ridiculous fashion than he scores in normal fashion. Yeah. <laughs> really, really, it's just, he's, a, he's an awesome player, awesome guy, and it's great to see him score here on his senior night. He's got one of the best shots I've ever seen. Mm -hmm. Now thrown out, first half will play it in. BG captain moves in, pass into the middle, and Tiggs was almost able to corral it, but it was poked away from him. Now first half trying to poke at it, now it's thrown back in. Now Shooty throws it back out. Harchi. Harchi off the board. Smith knocked down there by Ramirez. We saw him throw the body around a lot last night as he is still jostling with Smith. Now, great move there by Bursap. He comes over to Abreu, who plays it in deep. Tiggs runs into a man there. That's Ramirez, and they're battling now. And we saw them jostle a bit in last night's game as well. A shooty, pass across, Smith will get to it. And he's knocked down hard there, and a penalty is called as 
Anestis ran into him there. And Louisville Anestis, doesn't like it, but yeah. I think I had to call it there. Anestis will head off. <laughs> what do you think, Justin? You think that's again like it's it's a it's a bit of a borderline call. It, it, he he just caught him at a bad spot. He caught him in a bad spot on the edge. It's a dangerous hit. Burkhart trying to plead his case, and so was Anessis. Both of them trying to plead their case. And Anessis making his way into the box. And the first power play unit will start here for the Falcons. Papuanu, Zanal, Nitschke, Ferry, and Zebel. That Louisville coach is giving the business to the ref right now. And it'll be a two minute minor. And they're still going. That's what the delay is at the moment. 3.37 left, Falcons lead one nothing off of senior, on senior night, chasing all his goal. Yeah, I mean like, it, it, like it, the hit was clean. Like it was a clean hit. I think it was just where, like where the hit occurred was what drew the penalty. If they were a bit closer to the boards or a bit more away from the boards, I think it would have been fine. Chase Chenal, already a Golden Knight, will have the face off for the Falcons. And that'll go back to Trey Zebel. Zebel controls at the point. Pass across, Papuano has room to move up. Pass across, and, and now uh, Janelle has it. Pass in the middle, Ferry shoots, blocked off. It rolls in on the Giacomo, and he will cover it up. Great puck movement so far on the power play. And we'll reset and do exactly what we just did with the same people on the ice. And the, and the penalty was two minutes for interference. So I guess it wasn't the hit, so. I th yeah, I mean, I thought the hit was clean. And, and, and yeah, I guess Smith didn't touch the uh, puck yet. He was about to go touch it, but he, he got hit before he could. So that's what drew, drew the uh, penalty. Probably looking to make this a two-goal game, though. And then Papuanu blew a tire. And, and it's controlled now by Nitschke. And now Zebul at the point. Zebul down low. Denal. Denal tries to get one from a bad angle, and it got blocked off by Malia. Now down low, Ferry trying to control, and it could have been a breakaway for Morgan, but Ferry was able to poke it away from him. Great heads up play there from the junior forward, Cole Ferry. Now Malia, pass back, as BG will change power play units, and it's thrown all the way back down. Carl is, is gonna be the first man there, so Smalley will play into a safe spot. <coughs> now off the boards, Nelson plays it over to Denal. And all pass across to Horvath. Horvath waiting with it, being patient. Now pass back at the point. Tiggs. That's across. Gray. Gray back to Tiggs. Takes a drive. Now pass across. Gray. Now Nelson's trying to knock it down and gets it over to Tiggs. And a shot there. It got deflected just wide. And I'm sorry, that was Gray who got it over to Tiggs after Nelson got it over to Gray. Now a shot by Gray got blocked off. And that hurt Halinski as he is down. A pass back out and a shot there. And I believe it was saved anyway by the Giacomo. And the official blew the whistle during the middle of the play because Halinski was down. Hopefully he's okay as he's able to make his way up. And it'll be a discussion on if the ref should have blew that whistle or not by and the Bowling Green being. and Louisville team, but safety first and the whistle was blown. He was helped out by, um, by Zariski and uh, Dinsick there off the ice. Good to see him get off the ice. Hopefully he's okay. But now Dubendorfer, Burtzlaff, Smith, Higgs, and Gray will come on for the power play. Burtzlaff on the draw against Morgan. And this Power play doesn't have much time. Four yeah. seconds to the effect. Beatman throws it around, and that will do it for the power play. Another great kill here by the Cardinals. The Tick has it. Shot there, and a good save made there by the Giacomo through traffic as Dubendorfer was in front. And a puck 
It comes around, that's thrown out. And now Morgan, and it was touched up there. And the whistle blows the play dead. And the, and the face off will come out of the zone, I believe. Yeah, it'll be at the far circle in the, in the, the neutral zone. And just like last night, quick first period, a minute 21 left. This time, not four goals in it. Louisville wins the face off back. And is thrown in. Pass in front. Now thrown in front, Morgan trying to chop at it, comes back over to Beeman, but it went past him, so he couldn't maintain pressure in the zone. Williams throws it in, and it's whacked in by Burkhart. Final minute of the period now begins. And a gym wreck, Trent Gray will hold that puck in the corner for as long as he can. Uh, pass back out, and that's the shot saved, and the rebound went just wide. Not sure if, if Smalley got a piece of it. I'm pretty sure he got his paddle on it. Man, that was a phenomenal save. That was a great save. save. Both saves were great. As he did not see the initial shot, he was able to get his right pad out just in time. 30 seconds left to go now. That, is that puck is thrown in? Makes his way on that. Smalley will cover it up. And that stops play with 24 seconds left to go. So I think a pretty even first period. I agree. So far, so 24 seconds left. The to only go. difference is probably one, probably who's going to win the Player of the Year in the TSCHL, Chase and all. Mm -hmm. About the only difference so far this yep. year or this game. Now thrown around by Sarnowski, thrown in front, tip, save made by Smalley, and he holds it. 15 seconds left to go now. Fits up at the far circle. Zanol, Rudo, Nitschke, Sarnowski, and Klein out there. The face off was one forward, but it couldn't be controlled there by Carl. And they're gonna call uh, they're gonna call tripping against BG. So a late penalty taken by the Falcons. It's, and it's gonna be Chase Zanol who will head off. Horvath against Carl on the draw. Horvath, Klein, Nitschke, and Sarnowski out there as the killers. Horvath trying to control. Klein will take it. Five seconds left to go. They, they jostle in the corner. They're thrown in front, blocked off, and that will do it for the first period. As BG will take a 1 0 lead into the second on a goal from Chase Denall. So we will jump right into the Dirty Birds sec, uh, first intermission report. Not the second intermission report, the first intermission report. Ben. All you, take it away. Yeah, I think the only difference, both teams played a great first period. Um, you know, it was hard for both teams to move the puck at all. And the only difference is the phenomenal Chase Nolan a senior night netted one. Two penalties for Louisville. They killed both off, and Bowling Green in their first penalty kill at the moment. They've killed off the first 13 seconds of it. So we'll see what that leads to as Bowling Green will be down a man going into the second period. Justin, what did you like from what you saw? Well, I mean, it was a pretty even period. Uh, both teams were being very physical. We, we saw Schuler throw a couple hits for BG, and we saw Ramirez throw a couple hits for uh, Louisville. But overall, I thought it was a pretty good period. And uh, Denol getting the goal to put, to put BG on top was huge, and they have, to, they have to take that lead and run with it into the second period. And uh, yeah, I mean, they, did, they also did a good job staying out of the box until there was uh, less than 15 seconds left. And hopefully they, they're able to kill off this penalty. Uh, Louisville will, will have a power play for the first minute, 47 of the first period, uh, of the second period, excuse me. Yeah, I mean, if you're bowling, you gotta look for the uh, Louisville Cardinals come very, very hot out of intermission. So you gotta look out for that. We saw it yesterday. So, I mean, Drew Harper making his way to the locker room now, he'll probably say that or a lot more smart things than I'd say. 12.14 left in this intermission. We will see you for the second period in just a few. You want to stay tuned this one. A lot of fireworks left.
And good evening, everybody. We are back for the start of the second period. Louisville will start on the power play. As they control, Costa has it. First period recap. Uh, BG had two power plays, but no avail. And they got the only goal of the period scored by senior Chase and all. And Louisville got their first, <coughs> excuse me, their first power play with 13 seconds left to go in the period. And that's how we started the second period with Louisville on the man advantage. Yeah, and watch out for Louisville coming out hot. They are very hot out of the out of the intermission team. We saw yesterday scored three goals in the second right out of the intermission and tied the game up out of the intermission in the third. For the man advantage, if you're pulling, you got to play even extra tough, better than you're playing right now. Now, Nishki tries to make a move, but he lost it. Now, poke back in by Horvath. Great defensive play there by Horvath. Now, Carl trying to control. Throw him back up. Casa plays it. Casa back pass over to Dro. Dro throws it down low. Just, that's a good rhyme. Dro mm -hmm. throws it down low. Now Dro throws it down low. <laughs> All right, now you're just overstating <laughs> now, it. <laughs> now back to Dro, who throws it down low. <laughs> That's what I say. Man, I, say I, I say that for everybody. Throw shot saved by Smalley and he holds it. I say that for everybody. He throws it down low. It's just that it's what happens. That Poetic genius. His name, his name ends with an O. Well, with an X. But it's, but it's D-R-E-U-X. Yep. Dro. Droops. Burkhart against Ferry on the draw. This one back by Ferry. Now Papuanu will clear the zone. And the power play is about to come to an end. And the power play is now over. The Sickley's pass across. Shredders moves in. He shoots. And a blocker save made by Smalley. And he holds it. 18.08 left to go here in the second period. BG maintains their 1-0 lead. And they had a great penalty kill here to start the second period. Players on the ice. Horvath, Papuanu, Ferry, Tiggs, and Harchi. Horvath is the center, and he will take the face off against Sickleys. Archie wins it. So Louisville took it back, and now Archie takes it back. Now thrown in deep by the Cardinals. Terry trying to play it there as he was running through by Zima. Now Zima pokes at it. Still has a great move there. He shoots, save made by Small, and he holds it. That was a phenomenal move there made by number 28, Zima, on Louisville. Both teams make some changes. BG switches up their defensive pairing as they bring on Klein and Sarnowski. Horvath back ends one off the glass and out. Abreu goes back to get it. Off the glass, all the way down. And icing called. Looks like a tad premature there, just a little bit. Yeah, I mean, but that's kind of expected, though. It, it's happened a lot, especially in this arena. The refs around here like to call the icings as soon as they can. Horvath against Sicilies on the draw. This one back by Louisville. Now Shredders up the middle. He moves in. What a great job. He's in, and he put that one wide, and he took a tumble hard there into the boards. I don't know if Smalley got a piece of that one. I don't, I don't think he did. Is I believe the puck just rolled off of Shredders, and he came with a bolt of speed. He was looking like a, a, a Connor McDavid, just a burst of speed as he made it past everybody. Now Zima shoots, and that one got deflected wide. Goes back behind the net. Now thrown around. It goes over the stick of Shooty. But towards the net, and it was blocked off there by Sarnowski. Now Bowers goes behind the net, puts it in front. And it was just missed there by the Cardinal in front. And I believe that was a hand pass that was called. No, I think it went out of play. Oh, it might have. Went out of play off of Jake Shooty's stick. 
Big crowd for Jake Schutte in the audience tonight. The local kid. And, and we spoke to his parents uh, uh, before the game, or his dad before the game. Yeah, Mr. Schutte's a great guy. And we, and we saw them at a ton of road trips this year. Yeah, he even made the Boston trip. Mm -hmm. Including Simbro's family and a few other parents made that trip. Obviously, Nelson's from New Hampshire. Mm -hmm. and now, Schutte puts it in deep. Reverse out through it off the outside of the net. It's thrown down. Great control. Pass across. Diebel. Diebel throws it in. It was off the leg of one of the Cardinals. Schutte wasn't able to keep it in, and he'll play it back out over to Gray. And then Diebel throws it in. Played wide up to Giacomo. Beeman threw it back around. Emilia went to go play it, but Shooty stopped him from getting it. And now Beeman has it back again. And he, and he throws it out. Zeebel tried to play it off the boards, but it was blocked off. And now Emilio will take it back in the Louisville defensive zone. Emilia plays it over to Beeman. Now thrown up. Zeebel flips it up. Shooty plays it in deep. Stopped up there. Now Bertha pass in front. Rudo shot saved made by the Giacomo, and then that came off. And that stopped so many chances this year, and you know, like my favorite thing. Once, once this regular season ends, that we will not see the net coming off, I, at least for <laughs> your career anymore. And I can see the look on Rudo's face. He knows. I mean, I mean, I mean he knows he got robbed. I, ta I talked to him during the first intermission. He said, "I got robbed," and he did. Yeah, he's an all-time critical player on himself, and he worked so hard to, you know, be perfect. I mean, I mean, I told him he did all that he could on that chance back in the first. He, he put it on net right when the puck got on the second. I mean, the Giacomo got across at the perfect time. Now it's thrown back in. Delayed offside, it's called. Big pass across. It went wide of Bruno and uh, Nitschke. Now off the boards. Thrown across. A great move there by Costa. Costa moves in, he shoots, and a great save made by Smalley. That was a phenomenal move made there by Cam Costa. Now Costa plays it back out at the point. Williams, pass across. Out of the region now, it could be a two on one. Chopped at by Rudo, and it was negated there by Holinsky. And Holinsky, he, he had a great game uh, last night, and he's so far played a great game here tonight as well. You see Spins. Gets it over to Dinzik. Dinzik off the boards. Rudo's able to keep it in. Now chopped out there. They're all trying to play it. Rudo goes in to help him, and it's cleared out of the zone. Pass across. Costa controls there. Costa has Carl breaking towards the net. Tries to toe drag, and Harchi stops him up there. Harchi chip pass. It all knocks it down. Moves in with speed. Here comes it all. It all shoot save made by the Giacomo. And now Nitschke over to Denol. Denol. And he threw it right into the glove of the Giacomo. Yeah, and I think the Giacomo was amazed at what he did. And yeah, I don't think he even knew where the puck was. I don't think he knew no, how he got both that. players are laughing it off. And both teams will make changes. 14.02 left to go here in the second. BG still with a 1-2-0 lead. Now Schuler on the draw. See what's taken against Morgan. Morgan wants it back over to Burkhart. Going around. And that's this. They try to get it out, but Nelson kept it in. Great move there. Makes another good move and then gets tangled up with Vanestis. And Sarnowski is able to keep it in. Schuler goes in to get it. Running too hard there by Zeritsky. Throws it towards the net as that got tipped up at the far board. Sarnowski into the middle. Core. Fan on the shot. Now Burkhart takes it away. He's dangerous. He had two goals last night. Burkhart moves in. Fan on the pass. And then Cor took it away from him. But then it's taken back by Morgan. Now Cor has it and he clears the zone. And Zerisky stops it up at the blue line. And throw it back in. Smalley stops it back behind the net. Now Klein plays it back. Stopped up there by Morgan. And now Sarnowski plays it up. Cor pass across. Now Schuler, pass up, wide of Nelson, and that will be icing. 13.06 left to go here in the second. So Ben, what do you think of the period so far? We're almost halfway through. What do you 
think of both teams twice so far here in the second. Yeah, I mean, like we saw in the first, it's very, very difficult for both teams to get chances. Both teams have. I mean, offenses are great, but defenses shine bright once again. We'll see who gets, if there's any goals, we'll see, you know, what mistake has to be made right before it happens. That seems what has to be ha has to be done to get a goal in this game. Now, at the side of the net, it was worked by Zima, and his pass went off the outside of the net. Now Sickles has it down low. Fine and Zima chasing, and now Shredders will take it. Shredders in the middle, he shoots, saved by Smalley, and he holds it. And that's off play with 12.39 left to go here in the second. Yeah, and Jack, Jack Smalley make another great save. He's been fabulous since his debut in that Toledo game. We talked about great games that you called. That, just for the rivalry, feels probably my favorite game I, I ever called, especially with the BG winner. Now a shot there, saved by Smalley, and he holds off a shot for Milia. Like we said, there's only a weekend series left, and but for conference-wise, this is the last game of the conference schedule, last home game. Clubbers will head up to Lake State next weekend, and then the playoffs. Now Zebel, great move there. That's cross, just wide of Ferry. Now Beeman takes over. Beeman chopped out there by Ferry. Now thrown up, just past Zebel all the way down, and icing will be called. 12 19 to go here in the second. Lots of whistles in the past few minutes. Yeah, both teams, like we said, playing great defense and just chipping it back and forth, and those long passes don't always hit. And in that case, they didn't. And you'll have an icing and have a reset right to the left of the Giacomo, rather. That's always a fun one to say. Horvath won the face off back. Zebel controls. Zebel shot blocked off. Now Papuanu has it. Papuanu knocks off the puck there. Shot there. Save made by si by the Giacomo. I believe he got a piece of it. Not sure if it went wide. I, I heard it hit. I heard something get hit. It may have been the net as the net came off. Something got hit hard there. Yeah, I don't know if it was the top of the crossbar or him or what, but we've seen Cam Horvath have some beautiful goals so far this season as well. And that one right there. Sickle leads against Horvath on the draw. Horvath wins it back, Papuanu over to Gray. Gray, now Zebel chips it in. And the puck was knocked away from Horvath, now Papuanu takes over, now it's taken away. And nobody can pick it up, <laughs> and now Milia has it. Milia throws it in, it goes off to Smalley into the corner. Zebel, and this pass is fanned on, controlled in front, and poked away by Ferry and Horvath. Now drive there, blocked off. Now Gray will take it away and try and skate out with it. Gray, he may have lost the puck and, and lost an edge there. Now Ferry has it. Ferry pass up and just out of the reach of Papuanu as he was streaking up the ice. Uh, and now that puck is thrown out. Zebel controls. Zebel made a move there. Papuanu, long pass across. Ferry tries to poke at it. It's poked back out of the zone and now it could be a chance here. Poked at by Gray. Gray poke check there by Trent Gray to negate an odd man rush or a breakaway. And, and that's what that could have been, it was close. Now Abreu has a cross, it's been taken away and now thrown out towards the blue line. Smith battling for it now with Ramirez. Both sevens going at it. Zebel whacks at it. Zebel hooks the man out there and a penalty is called. And Zebel will head to the box as he knocks down, I can't tell who that is, I can't tell what number that is. Yeah, I missed, I missed what number it was. Yeah. I, I think that's going to be an interference call, though, is he hit him right before he gets to the puck. Let's see what the call is. Oh, it's going to be cross-check. I thought it was an interference, but I don't really think he hit him with his stick yeah. from what I saw. But He knocked down. That was Hauser, who he knocked down, number 24. So BG will have to kill off their second power play of the period. First one was only a minute 47. This one will be a full two minutes, barring any goals or other penalties. Carl against Denol on the draw. Denol's with Nitschke, Tiggs, and Harchi on the penalty kill. Dinzik, he, he was run out the puck there by Tiggs. Excuse me. Now back at the point, Carl down low. Morgan, now back, and now at the point, Beeman. Beeman shoots, save made by Smalley on the tip. Great save made by Smalley there with the left pad. And now Costa. Back out, Beeman. 
And then pass across, Casa. And down low, Zinzik, back to Casa. Casa waits to pass, being patient with it now. Leaves it at the point for Beeman. Beeman, pass across. Carl at the circle, he shoots, and that one may have been tipped. Thrown towards the net, was it, it got blocked off. Heads towards the corner, Casa now. Casa spins. Now back out, Beeman. Beeman shoots, and it, it got deflected, loose. Loose in the crease, as they're whacking at it, and, and now the Noel will try and take it out. And he'll bring it out for a shorthanded chance. Moves in. Takes a wide, oh, what a move there. He works and he shoots, and a big save made by the Giacomo. And then Denol and Casa both ran into the Giacomo there. And what a move there by Denol. 40 seconds to go on, on the power play. Carl tried to work it in front, but it was blocked off, and he maintains control. Passes it back now, Burkhardt. He shoots, save made with the shoulder by Smalley. Now it's worked back down low, Burkhardt. Pass in the middle, now Nelson. Waits, press the back, handed out, but fanned on it. Kept in though by Louisville. Now Burkhart, pass across, and it got tipped away. And, and now Denol will try and take it out again. So here he comes. Makes some moves, works his way on in, and poke check there by Holinsky. Now Nelson will take it. Nelson, and he, he tried to throw it in front, and it was blocked off. Power play now over, Zeebel's out of the box. Holinsky moves in. Holinsky stops up at the circle. Pass across, in between Dro and, that was Burkhart, and the shot by Dro was saved by Smalley with the glove, and that stopped play, 8.45 to go in the second. And if you want to name stars of that penalty kill, it's pretty simple, that defensive pairing of Nick Tiggs and Logan Harchie, man, was that cool. Logan Harchie, well first, sorry, I won't mention Logan Harchie now, but first, Nick Tiggs, wide open net in front of him, nobody was there, and he just gets a perfect tap, that created a Logan, or chasing all break, and then Logan Harchie does the same exact thing a minute later on the power play, and this game is still scoreless, and penalty kills are still perfect. And thrown back in, and, and on goal, and, and DiGiacomo stops it up. 834, <coughs> excuse me, 8.34 uh, left to go in the second. I cannot talk right now. Just fine in the first period. Can't talk here in the second. <laughs> first half wins it forward. Now in the corner, backhanded in front. Dubendorfer tried to get, uh, put it home, but it, it got blocked off. Now it's thrown out. Gray tries to keep it in, but could not. Now Gray has it again. Dubendorfer and him battling. And now Louisville controls back. Pass up, blocked off by Smith. Great defensive play there from Tanner Smith. Smith waits, pass across. Dubendorfer has it. Backhands one in front. Right, now he has it again. Back behind the net, pass in front. Shot there, just up and over the net. Off the stick of Tanner Smith. Throw it out, topped up there by Gray. Gray pass across, thrown in deep by Zeeble. Williams will play it in the corner. As they work it off the glass and out, Lu uh, Louisville does. And now Zeeble makes a move, knocks it down with his glove, moves in, great move. He's in, he shoots, save made by DiGiacomo. And Zeeble tried to do it all himself and almost did. Zeeble's been so good this year. Getting around defenseman just always gets stopped by that goalie. Now worked in by Denol. Denol drop pass. Gray shot save. It's losing the crease and they score. Adam Burtslap on the rebound. His second goal in as many games. And it's 2 0 BG with 7.22 left to go in the second. Oh, Captain, my Captain, what a gritty goal by Adam Burtslap. His fourth of the year. And like you said, his second as many games. This one with the goalie in net. And Man, has he been on a small heater recently. He gets that controversial one in Boston that unfortunately we couldn't stream for you. Um, and then he got one last night in the update, and this one just battling, chipping away, and chasing all gets the assist on his senior night. And Adam Burtzlaff buries one home. You know he'll celebrate tonight. And Dino, whenever he, he works his way in like that, he tries to shoot the puck, and why not? He has one of the best shots, if not the best shot, out of all the players on the ice right now, and I think that may have fooled the Giacomo the way he, he dropped it back for Gray. And we've seen Gray's release. He, he has a phenomenal release. And that puck sneaked its way through to Giacomo, and it was sitting right on the red line in the crease as, as that shot got the puck wide as Smalley. And then uh, a burst off right on the doorstep, found it, and put it home right before the net got the slosh. And that stick goes flying in the oh, air. Oh, into the crowd. And out of play. 
<laughs> as that was Melia on Louisville who broke his stick. And that was pretty cool. I yeah, I've never seen that. we got that on camera. Did we get that on camera? <laughs> and our cameraman, John Jaro, says hopefully we did. Special thanks to him and our scoreboard operator, Chandler O'Dell. Now Harchi works it up, goes off the stick of core. Now to Giacomo, backhands one around. Nelson will get to it first. Backhands one in front, core shoots, and they put that one just wide. The rebound goes off the outside of the net. Now Nelson, that's back out, Harchi. Harchi shoots, blocked off by Schuler. Now chop that there. Now it's cleared out by Hauser. Thrown back in by Harchi. Under six minutes left to go now here in the second. BG just extended their lead on a, on a goal from Captain Adam Burslaff. Now thrown off the boards. And now Tiggs kicks it off. It comes out and it's poked out by Smalley. I wasn't sure how to call that. It was kinda, I was kind of at a loss for words of what just happened. Yeah, that was a scary play right there. Now Harshi moves in, tries to make a move, and he was poke checked. And he gets it in deep. Nitschke, great back pass. Rudo now. Rudo, back to Sarnowski. His shot saved, it's loose. Cleared out of there by Carl. Now pass up, Dinzik has a break, he moves in. And he tried to make a move and Klein tipped it away from him. And the Louisville bench is up in arms as they were looking for a penalty there. And now Denol moves in. Here comes Denol, back pass, Rudo. Rudo, couldn't control. Now Costa will take it out. Pass yeah, the pass across, go ahead. I don't think Denal knew as, as much traffic was behind him. Now pass in. Sarnowski will control. Almost poke check, but he maintains control. Gets it over to Klein. Klein puts it off the boards. He lost it, Costa moves in. Costa tries to make a move, and he's poke checked there by Sarnowski. Now thrown in deep, Costa. Tried to get it out, it was, it was poked away there. Drisky tried to throw it in front, it was blocked off. It could be a two on one. Pass up and Denol has it. Pass across, Rudo on a breakaway. Mark Rudo moves in and, he, and a save made by DiGiacomo. As I believe he got just a piece of it. Mark Rudo has had so many chances. Especially tonight. And, yeah, and like in the past few games, he's had so many chances. He, he's just been, he's been getting so unlucky. Uh, and now Burkhart, pass down low, went through the legs of Morgan. Has a goal though, I think that was during the Adrian series. He did. I'm not mistaken, I think it was after the Boston trip. A pass out, and a penalty called there. As Louisville's gonna get called for holding. And Burkhart once again pleading his case. Oh, and there's some shoving down by the bench too as Sarnowski gets punched in the face. There'll be no call there. But it would just be a two-minute minor on number 12 for the Cardinals, 352. So let's see what PG can do here on this power play. This so far, penalty kills are perfect. It's going to be Hauser and Burkhart being sent off. So is it going to be a five-on-three? Yeah, both, I think both of them are in the box, Hauser and Burkhart. I think Burkhart got called uh, with roughing over in the. I mean, Sarnowski got. Cold cocked in the face. I mean, he got crushed. And I see Morgan skating over, so I guess it's going to be five on four. So I don't know. I don't see a Falcon player in the box, so I'm confused as to why it's still five on four. Zebul is able to keep it in. Great keep in there by Zebul. Zebul shoots just wide. 10 minute misconduct is the call. That's why it's a five on four, yeah, Justin. Yeah, yeah. I think I'd rather have the both guys in the box for two minutes rather than a 10 minute. Great move there by Denal, trying to get back to it. They should have played it from his knees, but could not. It just cleared back down. Zebul, back pass, and now Ferry. Moves him at speed. Shoot, save made with the blocker by the Giacomo. And now Zebul waits with it. Drop pass. And now Denol, down low, tipped up into the mesh. And that stopped play. Wait. 
301 to go in the second in a minute. 09 left to go on the power play. As Louisville changes their penalty kill unit and Fiji changes their power play unit. Horvath on now as he, as he, as he takes a face off against Carl and, and it's one back over to Gray. Now Tiggs, Tiggs waits. Tiggs shoots, save made by the Giacomo. Now in the middle, Nelson's shot was poked away from him. And now Gray has it. Drop pass over to Tiggs. Tiggs pass up. Now Core is able to tip it in. Walensky gets to it. Walensky clears it all the way back down. Two and a half minutes to go in the second. Fiji with a 2 nothing lead over the, the Louisville Cardinals in the second game of a two-game weekend matchup. A very big match when it comes down to rankings. And now Nelson moves in. Nelson pass across, and he made his way in on a Giacomo, and he had to make a save as the pass deflected off his pad. Now Gray passed back and went past Horvath. 15 seconds to go in the power play. Horvath reverses. Tiggs goes back behind the net. And reverses again. Now Gray. And the power play is now over. Now a second away, Helinski works his way on in. Helinski shoots, and that one went wide, high glove side. Now Shredders had it poked off him by Gray. Now Cora bounding for it, and Nelson will take it away. And Nelson chip pass up, went past Horvath, and now Milia has it. Milia moves in the zone. Wait, shoot, save made with the stick by Smalley. Now pass back. Thrown in deep by Helinski. And now Sikalis. And they always gets me. And now that one deflected off the outside of the net. Dangerous deflection there. Now Gray trying to control. Helinski uh, steals it. Save made with the arm by Smalley. And he will cover up. 108 left to go here in the second. And if you're bowling green, I mean, obviously, you never want to give up a goal. But especially now, you don't want to take your foot off the pedal. The worst thing you can do in this game up 2 nothing is give Louisville a lot of momentum going to the intermission. You got a lot of momentum with how gritty or two goals were, one by Denal, one by Burt's left. You do not want that to change. And Ocasta shot save made by Smalley as it may have been tipped. Going now, into the final frame. And now Shooty over to Burt's left as he works his way through neutral ice. Already has a goal in the game, moves in. He shoots save made. Great move there by Burt's left to get a shot on goal. Now Dubendorfer trying to take it. Shooty battling for it there with, with Dinzik. Now Beeman over to Casa. Pass across. Zariski. Pass up. Almost broken up by Sarnowski, but it makes its way into the zone. Klein plays it off, off the glass. Puck bouncing. Casa controls. Casa makes a move and scores. Great move there by Casa as he faked the shot. And he dropped it over to his backhand and slid it home with 30 seconds to go in, in the second. Louisville gets on the board and cuts the lead down to one. Yeah, and like I said, that's huge for Louisville. Going only down one, going to the final frame versus two. I mean, Costa, Jack Small couldn't really do much. Costa just put him in a blender. That was one of that was one of the nicest moves I've ever seen. That was a keep. That was a phenomenal move by Costa. There, I, and I mean, uh, I'll go ahead. I'm sorry. I'll finish what I was no, saying. No, I'm just like, saying he went through all five guys and you know, and then ended up getting past Smalley, being the sixth. He had a phenomenal um, series uh, last season when, when BG played them at Louisville is what I, I was going to say. And I mean, he was knocking on the door. He had a ton of chances last night and a few chances here tonight. And you can tell by the body language of him, he was frustrated with his play. And I assume he's very, very happy to finally get on the board with icing his club with seven seconds left to go here in the second. So see if BG can get one last chance as the faceoff will be in the offensive zone. Yeah, like we said last night, I don't think that Louisville team from last night was a team anybody expected to come out at all. I don't think Louisville expected, BG expected. I know sure as you know what, both of us didn't expect that. Nope. You know, we're seeing a lot different team than we played last night, even though it's the same players. Horvath wants to draw it back. Gray tried to shoot it, it got blocked off. And Morgan takes it away. Up one who's trying to get to it, and he took over a stick, and that will do it for the second period. BG takes a 2-1 lead into the third period. And we will hop right into the Dirty Birds second intermission report. Ben, take it away. Yeah, I mean, if you're Bowling Green, you're happy with your, your 
happy with the performance. You added another, and for that final final two minutes, give up a goal to make it two to one going into the final frame. I mean, it's kind of a positive and a negative for both teams. The penalty kill is perfect. Very good for your defense. You haven't given up a goal on the man or on the man disadvantage, but the man advantage. There hasn't been a lot of chances on both sides, and we've seen a lot of power plays for both teams so far. Justin, what do you think both teams need to do going into the final frame of play to uh, you know see more success as we only have 2-1 versus a game going into the yesterday with seven goals? Well, be, uh, Fiji, it cannot let Louisville take all the momentum after that uh, late goal. Louisville, uh, getting the monkey off the back is huge. They're gonna be, they're gonna be coming out firing in the third period. Uh, BG, they have to play their game, stay out of the box, uh, do what you've been doing all game. It was a bad bounce that led to, the, to Costa getting the puck, and he made a great move. Um, and clean passes, be patient with it, and yeah, just only let uh, Louisville take over this game. That's about it. Yeah, I mean, with 12-20 left in this intermission, 2-1, to one, Bowling Green still leads. Both teams had a goal in this period. You do not want to miss this third period because there's going to be a lot of action left. Stay tuned, and we'll see you in just a few minutes.
And we are now back here for the start of the third period between Louisville and Bowling Green. PG with a two to one lead. After two periods, as we begin the third period, pass up and then all try to glove it down, but could not. Throws past Williams. Williams pass across and now Nitschke. Spins back. A pass back, Zebel. Throwing towards the net, blocked off. Now throwing back. Williams throws it up, Zebel stops it up there. Zebel shoots, save, the rebound. Stubbers. Almost controlled by Giacomo. Now Zebel shot blocked off, now Gray has it. Gray, big drive, blocked off by Nitschke. Now chipped out. Now give me a break, Costa moves in against Zebel. Costa poked away by Zebel. Great play there by Trey Zebel. He's got it away with the combination of his stick and skate. So Ben, keys to the game here in the third, what do you think? Or keys to the period here in the third, what do you think? Yeah, I mean, if you're Bowling Green, you just kind of got to keep playing the game you are. It's kind of out gritting them to death. Um, yeah, you've had two very gritty goals coming from just chances you didn't think was happening, that slap shot snap someone's stick in half. And the third one I won't say, but you can say it if you want to. Stay out of the box. And that was Morgan who broke his stick on Louisville. Yeah, thank God they don't have, if they had a Jack Orr's out on their bench, these sticks won't be broken as much, <laughs> equipment manager. <laughs> now throwing back down. Figs gets there first, and icing is called. Eighteen thirty to go here in the third. Off will be in the BG offensive zone. More bad thing is Morgan on the draw. Morgan with his new stick now, and he wins it back. Throw. No throw down low though. Dro almost took it down low, and he throws it down <laughs> low now. Figs throws it out. Dritsky knocks it down at the blue line. Throws it up. Goes wide of everybody. Icing is called. Shredder is trying to plead his case to the official, saying it, it touched something. I thought it did, but I guess I thought I heard it too. You know, but yeah, I, yeah, it, it went off of something. Ball Green will take it though. 18-12 left in the third period. Horvath against Morgan again as Morgan makes his way to the circle. This one back by BG. Pigs tries to control it, hops over his stick. He was almost able to keep it in the zone. Now it's knocked away. Anestis had it poked off in by Tiggs. Pass in front, and it went wide. Now Morgan, pass down low, goes past it. Anestis. Now Ferry tries to chip it out and does. Goes all the way down, Dro will get to it. Dro throws it around, stopped up there. Ferry tried to put it in front, but it was blocked off, and now kept in by Horvath. Now taken out by Dro. Dro back ends one into the BG zone. Tiggs goes back to get it and throws it all the way around. Ferry stops it up there at the boards. Chip pass to, Dub to uh, Papuan, excuse me, I thought it was 26, but it was 16. Ferry shot, save made by the Giacomo and he holds it. Louisville was calling for an offsides on that one. I don't know what you saw, Justin, but I thought Ferry was offsides. Bollinger gets away with one there. I'm not sure, it was very, it was very, very close though. Either way, it doesn't matter. Giacomo saves it and we'll, instead of having a face up the blue line, we'll have one to the left of Gi to Giacomo. Schuler against Sickley is on the draw. <laughs> Players on the ice with Schuler are Core, Nelson, Sarnowski, and Klein. And the official talking to score a table for a moment. Nelson's drive got deflected and it went just wide. Now thrown around. Polinski. Takes it, will work his way up, and he was poke checked. This one back by Louisville, and now it went past the stick of Sicilies, and now it's thrown back out. Zima, pass out. Milia back over to Zima, and he lost this. He was knocked down by Schuler, but he regains control as he got back up. Now throwing back, Helinski. Was it in deep, and Sarnowski tried to stop it, and he did. Nelson. Pass up, off the stick there of Polinski. Now Milia, that's cross Costa. 
Kasha throws it up, and now Sarnowski. Off the stick of Nelson, so, and it's still in the zone as Casa controls. Casa spins back in the corner, throws it back out at the point. Williams shoots, saved by Smalley, tries to cover it up, but it went past him. Now it's kept in, Core takes it away. Core, pass up, first half has it now. First half, moves in, in the corner, running through hard there by Abreu, now Casa steals it. Casa throws it all the way up, all the way down. And Ison called as Zeebel just barely beat him out. Yeah, I don't think Zeebel beat him. The puck just beat. And I, I don't know. I don't even know how to say it, but the puck hit Zeebel first. I mean, that was a very, very close icing call. I might have waved it off for being unbiased. But right, right when the official blew the whistle, I could see the uh, the Louisville coach. Right when the official blew the whistle, I could see the, the Louisville coach jumping up and down in frustration. He's got a reaction for a lot, though. Yeah. I've seen him try to <laughs> talk to the ref very, a good amount. He's very animated. Very vocal guy. I've never met him, but he does coach one heck of a squad. Mm -hmm. He does. Very, very a talented team, Louisville is. Now Zeebel waits. Down low, Dubendorfer. Controls. High stick. And yeah, and they're going to get somebody here, I believe. I think it's yep, Tanner they're Smith. Get Tanner Smith on a penalty here, so Louisville is going to go on the power play. That is a huge, this was a huge two minutes in this game when it comes to decision and, time. And it's going to be two minutes for high sticking. Yep. Yeah, this is going to be a huge two minutes when it comes to, when it's all said and done, what both teams do. As Bowling Green looked to start setting something up, and I didn't see it because it was away from the play, but Tanner Smith obviously got called for a high stick. They were jostling at the dot at the far faceoff circle, pretty much right at the dot. And they made their way over in the slot, and then the penalty was called. As now Holinsky controls, as Louisville controls to start off the power play. Holinsky shot save, and the rebound went too far away from Stretters, so he couldn't control. A pass in the middle. Dubendorfer, pass out, Burtslap on a breakaway. Burtslap knocks it down, moves it, he shoots, and he scores! Adam Burtslap, his second goal of the game, short-handed, and it's 3-1 PG, and what a pass from Jake Dubendorfer. And once again, the Louisville team is very animated. So is Adam Burtslap, though. Oh, captain, my captain, three goals on a series, two goals on the night, and now his fifth goal of the year. What? I said he was on a small heater. Now he is officially on a major heater. Captain Adam Burtslap. Nets, his fourth in just over a week. I mean, what a pass that was from Dubendorfer, the, as you say, golden bullet. He was able to flip it out on the back cam. Burtslap caught it perfectly on the tape, and he put it home. And I mean, we we actually met the, Dub the, the official golden bullet's parents today. They're at the game. Nice to meet them. They're very nice people. Raised a heck of a hockey player. Archie works his way out. Moving in with speed. He's got Horvath breaking. Archie moves in. Archie shoots. And that one went off the blocker, I believe. And that'll end the off power the play. Yep. Oh, 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 no, there's still a uh, minute 13 left to go. No, I think. Oh, I thought Louisville was going to get called for a power play there, oh, or yeah. penalty there. I don't think so. I, I've been mistaken. My my apologies on that one. I saw, I saw a big tumble, or I didn't see. I saw the end of a big tumble in the corner, and then the whistle got blown. Horvath on the draw, and he'll take it against Carl. But still a minute 13 on the power play for Louisville. Louisville wins the draw back. Casa controls. Back pass, Beeman. Pass up, Casa now throws it in deep. Goes off the second off the glass. Off, off the second of Smalley, that is. Now in the middle, Horvath takes it away and clears all the way back down. The Giacomo thought about trying to throw it all the way down, but did not. Now Beeman drops it off for Carl. Carl pass across. Too wide of Casa. Thrown in as it takes us looking for Denal on a break. We're going to get it to him. Now turn across, and Denal will take it away. Just to kill time, he'll skate up, and he gets knocked down. No call there, and he's knocked down hard again there, and that's going to be a penalty against Morgan. Great job there by Denal to keep trying to battle for that one, and at least all, at least you can do is get a penalty. 
or draw a penalty rather. So with 25 seconds left to go on that penalty, it'll be four on four and then BG will get a power play for a minute 35 barring any other penalties or goals. And in that 10 minute game misconduct, the Louisville player will come out of the box at 13.32. I talked to our former head of hockey ops, still helping out, Robert Fairchild. Great, great job by him and all he does. Now Driscoll controls off the faceoff. That's across Zima. Zima moves in, makes a move. Knocked off the puck hard there by Gray. Great defensive play there from Trent Gray. Now Rudo, knocked down there. Tiggs has to wait for Rudo to get back on sides as he was knocked into the zone. Three seconds, two and one, and BG is now on the power play. Uh, puck's going all the way back down. Gray takes it away. Tries to avoid Shredders. Great pressure here from the Shredders back behind the net. Now Denal steals it. Denal off the boards. Gray has it now. Gray pass up and that's Papuanu. Papuanu moves in, drop pass over to Nitschke. Nitschke down low, Papuanu pass back out and he just missed Ferry. And that would have been a beautiful play. And Ferry would have had a lot right of room. There. He would have had a lot of room to move in. And that's the last person, maybe, you know, one of the last people on the team that you want to give a lot of room on. Cole Ferry is a very talented player. Pass in the middle and Zinski's shot got blocked off. Trying to keep it in his ferry, and he does to negate a breakaway. Great defensive play there. Now shot saved, the rebound. It's loose, and now cleared out by Carl. 30 seconds to go in the power play. Pass out, pass across. Great move there by Ferry to put it through his legs. He moves in, he shoots, and he scores! What a shot by Cole Ferry! Power play going, it's 4-1 BG. What a four minutes for BG, Justin. Like we said, these two minutes were gonna be very decisive. And just like that, two minutes, and you add another two minutes, and you got a 4-1 lead for the Falcons. Two goals on a shorthand and a power play goal. I mean, like we said, you, do, you don't wanna give Cole Ferry space, and what do you do? You give Cole Ferry space, and he puts one on the board. I mean, that was an unreal shot right off the bar and in. He just waited. He picked his target and he hit it with the 12 27 to go in the third bg with two goals here in the third to give themselves a little cushion and they now lead four to one now nelson moves in tried to make a move there but he was poked off the puck now sickly is pass across brought in and the shot was blocked off fine trying to play it now thrown around core will get to it core no. go ahead sorry not if you don't realize that Jack Smalley with his first ever ACHA point, the goalie with the assist. I actually I actually heard, this is something I, I probably should have mentioned before, I was told by Mark Ruto that he got an assist last night. Oh, really? He, he, he actually got he got a secondary assist on one of the goals last night, apparently, and it comes back in front. Woo. And that could have been a dangerous chance, but luckily there was no shot on goal. And then Schuler got taken down there by Abreu, and they're gonna get Abreu there. And he throws his arm up in frustration and confusion as he will head off. So Burkhart leads the Louisville box and Abreu will take his spot. Yeah, and a very happy Mr. Schuler, who, Sh uh, Luke Schuler's dad, who um, is in a, the audience tonight. Well, I caught him laughing and smiling after Schuler gets the penalty drawn for him instead of drawn up against him. And, and I can see Schuler also smiling. He was skating off the ice. Yeah, and, you so know. Another power play here for the Falcons. One for one here in the period. Zebul, waiting with it, drop pass, Ferry, pass across, Papuanu. Now Denol, back out, Zebul, pass across, Ferry, he's got room, back out, Zebul, Zebul, pass across, Ferry, Ferry has it in the middle, comes out over uh, to Denol, he tries to, to pick the corner, and a save made by DiGiacomo, and the net came off. Denol, they were trying to make one of those highlight reel goals we've seen so many times. Like you said, he, he has more goals on crazy plays than the normal plays you'd see a goal on. I mean, I'll take a goal now, too, but BG, they're one even strength goal away from scoring every goal that you can score. They've scored a shorty in this period, they've scored a, and they've scored a power play goal in, in this period. They're an even strength goal away in this period from getting all three in the same period. Nothing like hitting for the cycle in a period. Mm -hmm. A 
Pass across, and that was an all. Pass in the middle, and he just missed Nitschke as he was tied up there in front. I don't yeah. know if that's a really a thing in hockey, but I like it, hit for the cycle. Now Zebo got knocked down there. Morgan runs into him. Now Zebo. Pass out. Papuanu throws it in deep. No, we'll get there first. Is it all running through there by Milia? Maintains control. And now Ferry. Ferry. Back out. Figs. Figs. And now Ferry. Ferry passed across. And it was almost kept in there by Papuanu, but it left the zone. And passed across. Zima controls. Shot on. Save made by Smalley with the pad. With the paddle, excuse me, not the pad. Now Papuanu. Pass out. Core has it. Core awaits. Pass across. Nelson. Nelson. Great move there. Pass out back at the point. Figs. Figs. Still has it. Goes down low now. Now works his way back out at the point. Made a full cycle around the zone there. Now a drop pass. Now Gray. Throws it down low. Polinski tries to throw it out, and Horvath just barely couldn't keep it in. Ten seconds to go on the power play. Horvath spins away from Shredders. Great job there to get away. Backhand saucer pass. It was not almost knocked down by Carl. Now out of the box, and a big collision there. And another penalty is called. Oh and my. Abreu left the box, fell down. The dude trying to knock the puck away, and then Cora went toppling over him as he, <laughs> as he has to jump over Abreu, and Abreu is right back where he started. Oh, you know, he is not happy with that. Toe picks right out of the box and <laughs> makes Cora look like he invented flight. Or sorry, makes Cora look like the Wright brothers, the joke I was trying to make there. I was just baffled and he doesn't even make it to center ice and he just turns right back around and he's back in the box. Horvath wins it back and now Gray, BG on the power play again. Core. That's across and it got deflected out of the zone. Figs will go back to get it. Figs spins back, gives it over to Horvath. Horvath knocked down there hard by Costa. Costa is run into by Figs at the boards. Expect to see it if you're Louisville, or if you're watching this game, Louisville's gonna be much more aggressive down, down three now. Now Morgan. Poke pass was blocked away. Nine minutes to go now in the third. 120 to go in the power play. Pass across. Gray moves in. Gray shoots save made by DiGiacomo and he holds it. And BG will throw out their first power play unit. And then Louisville will throw out their other penalty kill unit. Denal against Zima on the draw. Denal was back, it goes off the head of Papuanu. Whacked that, and then Nitschke and Denal ran into each other as they both went to go save the puck from getting cleared down. And they both did, but then it was cleared out right after that. And now Zebel waits with it. Now it's passed. Went wide of Nitschke, now it's back in to back out. Off the glove, and it could be a break here. Shredders moves in. Shredders save made by Smalley. Jack Smalley comes up big again. And now Papuanu moves in. Papuanu goes around the net. Pass out in front, and he missed a couple players in front. Zeebel slowly goes back to retrieve it. Eight minutes to go here in the third. shoots and that may have hit the post I'm not it sure did. it didn't know yeah I couldn't tell and he's come so close to so many goals this year Justin mm -hmm. I he, think next year he's gonna explode for a lot of offensive po superpower he scored a lot yeah no I'm it's not saying like he hasn't he scored have, a lot yeah, but he I mean, can have he way could more have, he can have so many more goals with all the chances in the space that he creates with all his crazy moves and toe drags Thrown back down, rolls in on net, and covered up by DiGiacomo. Yeah, I don't want it to come off and I'm taking anything away from Zebo when I say that, but once once he fully taps in that potential, say goodnight, you have a superstar in your hands. Two ways, but especially on offense. I mean, he, his toe drags are absolutely beautiful. My bad. 
First laugh against Sicilies on the draw. Now Klein shoots one, and that one got deflected just wide. Now thrown out. Ramirez got it over to Sicilies, and he's running to the boards hard there by first laugh. The puck pops out of the zone. Seven minutes to go now. Tarnowski pass over to Smith. Smith, now Burslav. Two goals in the game already. Burslav pass across. Comes over to Shooty. Shooty in the middle. Now Burslav back over to Smith. Smith waits with it. Pass out. Shooty. Pass across. Burslav couldn't corral the cross crease pass. And he was so close from his hat, first hat trick of the season, at least if not his first hat trick of the ACHA team. Now blocked off by Sarnowski on the shot from Anessis. And Anessis and Burslav jostling at, at the boards. Now a uh, sickly shot was blocked off by Shooty. Puck comes around. Now thrown out. Demon spins away. He throws it in deep. Archie off the boards. Throws it out. Beeman. Six minutes to go now in the third. Holinsky. Throws it out. It was off a couple players, and now Archie will play it, and Cora will throw it in deep. Now Archie plays it over to Tiggs. Now Archie. Now Morgan works his way in. Morgan tried to throw it in front and it was blocked away by a BG defender in front. And now and now uh, and now Helinski. And Helinski will take it up. And oh, and, and Helinski will take a shot. And that is deflected off Jack Smalley and will be out of play. We'll have a face off right or left of Jack Smalley. So Ben, what's your assessment been so far here in the third? Yeah, I mean, I think both teams have played a great third period like we've seen in the first two. Back and forth, um, great defense. And, but a difference, like we said, pros and cons of having a great penalty kill is the power plays are producing. But this time, Bowling Green produces on the penalty kill and the power play. But and, oh, Chase Nitschke was so close from breakaway, but tripped him himself up with his own stick. Now it'll be dumped out and picked up and regrouped by Logan Harchi. Logan Harchi will dump that in, almost taking out a Louisville Cardinal. Louisville will take that back up and start. And that will be hit to, I believe that's Tiggs. Yep, and Rudo will bounce that back in. And now Williams will go and get it. Sorry, I had to step away for a second. Thank you for covering for me, Ben. Of course, at least I could do on your senior night. Mm -hmm. It's your job. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> now thrown out, and Dinzik runs in the gray there. Now Costa brings it in. Costa shoots, and that one went just wide. Naruto tried to chip it out. He was pickpocketed there. Long pass across, went just in front of Costa. And now Nitschke. Pass out. Went wide up to Nolan Naruto. Icing waved off. Dinzik will play it there. Being poke check there by Rudo. Now pass out, comes over to Dinzik. Dinzik chips it in, under four minutes to go now. BG with a four to one lead over Louisville. And now Denal off the boards and just wide of Ferry. Ferry trying to race down, icing waved off. Great job by Cole Ferry, did just a battle. I mean, he's a very fast skater. And Ferry was able to get it across as he was down on his back. Great play there by Ferry to get it over to Horvath. Now Papuan who was able to keep it in. Horvath trying to race after it. And man, is this third period flu. Yeah, it's been quick. Morgan waits. Pickpocketed there by Zebel. Now pass out. Horvath will try and get to it. And he will. He moves in. Horvath was around the net. Being washed there. Puts it down low. Ferry. Pass back out. Sarnowski. And his pass went out of the zone. Now the dump and attempt by Horvath was, was blocked off, but now Gray has it, and his pass is taken away, and now a lot of room for Anessis to skate on in. Anessis shoots, and that one went wide. 
puck is thrown all the way back down. The icing waved off. Under three minutes to go now here in the third. BG still with a 4-1 lead. Dubendorfer tried to throw it back in, but it was blocked off. Now thrown up. Klein plays it up. Polinski works his way on in. Polinski waits. Puck check there by Burtzlaff. Pass across. Sickles. Burtzlaff almost took it away. And Dubendorfer knocks down Sickles there. What a hit there by Dubendorfer. And the Golden Bullet attacks. And that shot is blocked off by Sarnowski. And he throws it out. Uh, and that was about as close as you could get to hitting the ceiling. Yeah. Like uh, I that was inches. Yeah. Like we said about uh, Dubendorfer, like he's a smaller guy, but he knows how to throw the body. And that puck is thrown up into the scorer's box. As Zach Brown, Aiden Licata, and Roby Fairchild had to uh, duck for cover. Yeah, Fairchild was complaining. Fairchild was complaining in the intermission how he was so tired. That'll wake him up real quick. Yeah, yeah, I think it will. So exactly two minutes left to go here in the third. Face off, one back by Louisville. With the three goal game, do you even think about pulling your goalie here, Justin, or no? Uh, I know it's it, that weird if, if bridge. They, if they were going to, they would have already done it. Yeah, you're so, right. So I, I would say no. And they score. Wow, was that a bad bounce. As that was a keeping attempt. And it went off of Klein and went right through the five hole of Smalley. I don't know who's going to get credit for that goal. I think it might be Beeman. It's got to be the guy. It's got to be. I didn't see who it was. Got to be I the one that kept it, it in because if not, that's was, a high stick. I think it was Beeman. I want to imagine. I want to imagine it was one of their defenders. It came this close from being. It came. So or I guess I believe it this was. Close. I believe it was Beeman. Came very close to being a high stick, but he missed it and just fluttered through Smalley. As now, now the debate is: Do you pull the goalie? I. Uh, I think you do. I. I, I mean, would also I mean, think. Why not? Two goals down. It's not going to hurt you. Now thrown back in by Nelson. And now Schuler throws it across the slot wide. Now Dinzik has it. And now it's picked up there by Zeritsky and poked out of there by Kerr. And the final minute in the, in the Slater Family Ice Arena for this season for the Bowling Green Falcons. Yep. Cora throws it out. And Denault trying to get to an empty net, and it was poked off of him. Oh, I didn't see the goalie leave. I didn't either. I, 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 was, fixing our, our, uh, I was fixing our clock. Save made by Smalley. Smalley looking for the empty net. And, and then now it's loose in the crease. And Costa has it. Costa tried to put it in, and he does. And now we got ourselves a game. And that's, that's one true Harper is going to let Jack Smalley hear about as much as I love the conference. You and cannot like do that. The one, oh, sorry, our, uh, our uh, the producer, Chandler, our Chandler Odell has something to send to, so now I'm trying to broadcast and also keep track of the time. Uh, but one thing I, I was going to say is that if, if you're a goalie and you're going to go for the empty net, you have to shoot it right away. You cannot wait. And Smalley, I think, I don't think he was waiting. I think he just hesitated, and he waited a bit too long, and the puck got poked off him. And now, I mean, this is scary now. Yeah, 30.8 seconds left. And just like that, two freak goals. And Louisville's right back in this with a lot of talent, 30 seconds left. I told you not to, not to tune out, because there's going to be a lot of fires for those that didn't tune out. You made the right decision. We got a great one. Louisville wins the, the time out of the timeout as Bowling Green will also make their way out to the ice. And Burkhart will get a, a, a credit for that goal is what they said. I thought it was Costa who swung it and got it, but I guess it was Burkhart. I'm very surprised that the goalie for Lu or the, the Giacomo is even making it back out. I mean, you can, I mean, like you kind of have to. This yeah, face off. How is much time's left? This face off is crucial. Yep. Carl against Denol. Here we go. Puck is dropped and Denol wins the drawback. Gray chips it up towards Nishki. Nishki with a big hit there. And a penalty is called. 
Oh my goodness. That is a huge and call. I don't know what they're gonna call there. I mean, I thought Nishiki timed that hit perfectly. Are they gonna call cross-checking maybe? I don't think it was. He hit him with the shoulder, right? I don't wanna sound I don't crazy. Know. And let's see, it's gonna be two minutes. Hit from behind. Yep. Wow. So sorry, the clock did not start. I have to keep track of this stuff and also the score. I, I apologize, guys. It's rough. <laughs> so 21 seconds left to go now. It's going to be six on four. Oh, my goodness, Justin. This is something. It's been all against Carl on the draw. And Carl wins it back. Kalinski waits. Pass across. Beeman. Beeman. Shoot. Save. Rebound. It's loose. Zebel trying to get to it. Zebel off the boards and out. They're all trying to race after it. And, and he's going to beat Helinski to the puck. Six seconds to go. Carl throws it down the ice, and it gets deflected. And now Zebel will skate back, and that will do it. BG hangs on. A little scare in the final two minutes, and they hang on, and they sweep <laughs> the two-game series against Louisville, winning 6-4 to four last night and 4-3 to three here tonight. And they win the final game at home this season. And man, Justin, we'll get straight into this Dirty Birds post-game report. What a finish here in Bowling Green, Ohio, as the Clubbers hold on to win four to three. I mean, Justin, they didn't, they kind of played a very sound game for the last two minutes. One crazy bounce and a silly mistake by Jack Smalley, and we had a one goal game, but the, I think, in my opinion, the uh, scoreboard doesn't show how, the scoreboard shows how close this game was, but I think Bowling Green won this one handily. Yeah, I mean, it there, was, there was a big scare at the end. A couple like bad bounces and miscommunications in the final minutes made it very, very, very scary for everybody. But I mean, yeah, BG sneaks out with this one, four to three, and they sweep the, uh, the, the two game series. And this is this will do huge things for them in the rankings heading into next weekend, which will be the, the final weekend before the playoffs. Yeah, and for those who don't know, you need to be top 14 to make regionals. You need to be regionals to yep. make uh, nationals. And, I mean, obviously you don't know what's going to happen when it comes to the TSCHL playoffs. Any, you know, it's one game set throughout the entire tournament. So if you can get in before you can even start playing the TSCHL playoffs, then you might as well do it. And this is a way to do it, man. Look, Falcons sweep a higher-ranked team in their final weekend of TSCHL play in Southeast region play and we'll see if it's enough yeah As uh, Justin it's your last game in the slate calling for the ACHA hockey do you have anything else to wrap this one up before I say our goodbyes for all you guys that have been watching over the past two years it's been an absolute pleasure I know uh, it's definitely gotten better over the last two years I um, was nowhere near as like experienced as I am now uh, about a year and a half ago when I started uh, to all the parents out there, thanks to you guys uh, for watching and, and all the compliments. It means more to me than I can put in the words. Um, I mean, there's, uh, there's so much that I could say. I mean, there's like so many words. Uh, like, I don't know. It's it's, it's a lot to take in. Uh, the past couple of years, it's been, it's been the best two years of my life, really. It's been just a, a, a great experience all throughout. Uh, thanks to you, Ben, for doing it. Uh, I, I can tell you one thing. It was a lot more fun doing it this year than last year. <laughs> doing it by myself last year it was pretty rough. Uh, having, having a partner who I can hang out with on and off the ice is just, I mean, it's great. Made it so much better. Um, to, um, coach uh, Drew Harper and last year's coach, uh, Jake Rischel, thank you guys for the opportunity. Uh, team president, Adam Burtslap, thank you. Uh, I know I didn't think it was going to be anything like this when he uh, when he when he hired me, and uh, it's been more than I could ask for. Uh, there's so many people to thank, um, but I'll just uh, leave it at that. And uh, that's about it. Ben, any, anything else you want to add? No, man, you're making me teary. I what a great <laughs> tribute. I mean, luckily we have a few more games together. We got yeah, um, you know the TSCHL playoffs, and we'll see what happens with that. But with rather than that, as Justin waves to his family, I'd like to thank you all for tuning in. For me, Ben Shannon, for the beautiful voice of the voice of the Falcons, Justin Chicatano, for team president Adam Burtzlaff, head coach Drew Harper, uh, and everybody else. Oh, cameraman Chandler O'Dell and producer uh, 
John Jarros as I flip those in my head. <laughs> Sorry, that tribute was so great. Yep. Uh, I, we'd like to thank you for tuning in to another Dirty Birds production and of ACHA matchup. Your Bowling Green Falcons have swept the Louisville Cardinals and look to play Lake State next weekend. Stay tuned to our Twitter for all the information on the TSCHL playoffs and the game next weekend. We thank you, and for all, as always, and we will see you once again next week. Thank you guys so much. It's been an absolute pleasure, everybody. Have a good night. Have a good night.